Now that we know what the lever rule is, we can use it to sketch the microstructure, and the lever rule will tell us how much of each phase we should sketch. So for example, we know that as we cool this thing down, right, to this point right there, the very first solid would form. So we could sketch it. At that point, let's call this point A. We could draw, if we looked in sort of a microscope, we could draw this at point A. And we would see little tiny specks of solid just starting to form. So this we would label, we'd say that this is liquid. And it's common to show both the composition and the amount. So this would be essentially 100 weight percent liquid. And what would the composition be? Well, the composition was the initial composition. And so it's going to be 50 weight percent FA. 50 weight percent FA. Now the solid that forms, we'll call it just alpha, it's the olivine phase, right? It's essentially not there at all, zero weight percent um, alpha. And its composition would be clear over here at, I think we called it 20 weight percent phaolite. So its composition, the composition of alpha equals 20 weight percent of phaolite. So the composition of the liquid is 50, the solid is 20. See how this works? So we can label it. Now let's do the one that we just solved for. At this temperature, right, so at this point right there, we'll call that point B. At point B, we could label it as well, right? So let's draw the microstructure at that point. At that point, point B, we now know that we've got 63% olivine and 36% liquid. So it's now more solid than it is liquid. About two-thirds of it is solid and only one-third is liquid. So let's draw that. The solids would have started to form and grow until they're about two-thirds. So I don't know if we've drawn two-thirds there, but that's maybe about right. So this would be our alpha phase. We would say that it is the, the weight fraction, the weight percent of alpha equals, we solved it up here, 63.6, 63.6. And then the composition, the composition of alpha at that point, we should also write down. We did that previously. The composition is 38 weight percent phaolite, 38 weight percent phaolite. Okay. And then for liquid, we would do it as well. We'd say, okay, we have 36.4 weight percent liquid, and the composition of our liquid is 71 weight percent phaolite. And again, we knew that it was 71 because that's where the tie line intersected the liquidus, and then we drop that down and see where it's at. Is this making sense? Let's do one more. Let's do it just above... Um, do it just above the solidus line there, okay? So we draw our line here, just above it. Our solid is going to be basically now at the original composition, and the liquid's going to be clear over here at maybe 81, okay? So at that point, it's going to be almost entirely solid. So let's draw it almost entirely solid with just a tiny bit of liquid left. So we'll draw this at point C. Let's label that point C. Okay, at point C, we now have essentially a complete solid with just a little bit of liquid left at the boundaries. Just a tiny, tiny bit of liquid left at the boundaries. By the way, it's common when you're doing these to, to fill these in so it's clear to tell which is which. So you might like do a couple of scribbles in these to show that they're solid. whereas the other's liquid. You can do that if you want. Here we're showing you, um, I guess we reversed the color. We, we filled in the liquid, but we'll label it so it's clear. Here we're going to say that this is liquid, and it's essentially zero weight percent liquid. And the composition of that liquid is 81 weight percent of phaolite. Then this is going to be the olivine, alpha, right? and it is essentially 100% weight percent of solid. 
like there's only a tiny bit of liquid left because we're just above that solidus line. And the composition of that solid was 50 weight percent phaolite. So that's why the lever rule is useful, is that at any temperature you can figure out the fraction of the phases and the composition of the phases. So you could draw these diagrams of how it's going to solidify. Now this is not a very interesting structure. Once you go a little bit below this point, so if we went from C down here to let's say um, D, it would look essentially just like this, except the liquid would be gone, and we'd be left with just what are called grains. So these regions here, these regions are called grains. Why are we calling them grains? So those regions are grains. You can think of them as having a crystal orientation, right? When they start to uh, nucleate in the solution, they're going to have a certain orientation. Let's imagine that the atoms are all lined up in that sort of checkerboard pattern right there. But this one is aligned slightly different. See that? So what's going to happen when they grow into one another? There's going to be a boundary where the atoms don't line up quite right. So we can see that. Here we would see, let's say that this was lined up like this, but here the atoms were lined up like that. So there, there's a leftover grain boundary. We call that a grain boundary. It's a region where the crystal is imperfect. The atoms don't bond exactly like they like to. Uh, they end up somewhere in between. Okay, So that's an important distinction, grains and grain boundaries and using the lever rule. Now let's, uh, let's do one more example of this. So it says, what is the weight fraction of the alpha phase if the initial composition was 35, the composition of the alpha phase is 42%, the composition of the liquid phase is 31%, right? So they want to know the weight fraction of the alpha phase. Well, the alpha phase is on the right-hand side, right? It's to the right of the tie line. So what portion of the tie line do we want? We want this... Uh, left hand portion right there. See that? We want from here to here. Hope you can see that. That's the portion of the tie line we want divided by the total length. So we're going to do, so the weight percent of alpha is going to be equal to um, 35 minus 31 divided by 42 minus 31, right? When I plug that into my calculator, I find that it is 57.14. So 57.1 weight percent alpha. Now let me ask you this. If instead of the weight fraction, you wanted the volume fraction, how would you do that? How would you go from weight fraction to volume fraction? Well, you need something that converts weight to volume. What's the tool for that? That's density, right? Density is equal to mass divided by volume. So if you took this weight percent right here and you divided it by its density, right? Let's say that it had like 8 grams per cc, 8 grams per cubic centimeter, all of a sudden the weight would cancel out and you'd be left with a volume. So you could figure out the volume fraction. That would give you the volume of one phase. You would do it with the other phase as well, figure out its volume. And then divide the volume of one phase by the total volume of both phases, and you have the volume fraction. All right? And we've got some worked examples of this.